Yes, indeed, it is the Shelter Footy Cast live from the Back Chat Studios. It's Skeet and the Sandover medalist. Just seen Will Schofield taking the two boys down the road. Walking them to work. <laughs> Walking them to school. To the school. He looked like a beaten man just yeah, from there. The job. When Alex is away, uh, he just looks like he's um, out of his depth a bit uh, when it comes to being Mr. <laughs> Probably Mr. still Lump. hasn't had a lot of sleep. But he had the Southern <laughs> River Band boys going off at the start there. And uh, it's going and I were out on yes. Friday night at the Charles Hotel and had an absolute ball terror of a night watching the boys. And... He uh, probably still hasn't had a lot of sleep yet, Scoey. On the chair at the Charles, uh, good good venue, and uh, we know that, that the Southern River Band putting on a ripping performance. Uh, by the way, uh, just a reminder, we're just doing one shelter footy cast a week from here on through until uh, the foreseeable uh, Mondays, so make sure you join us for that. Uh, socials at Shelter Footy Cast, footycast at shelterbrewing.com.au. You can get involved in that. The YouTube back chat, uh, Shelter Footy Cast playlist is on board. And also, of course, we've got our Thirsty Camel Clanger of the Week. Not sure we've got a... In fact, we might have a couple from the races. We were, we were at the <laughs> race on, on Saturday. Don't run out of your favourites. Grab your shoulders at Thirsty Camel. Uh, and, of course, welcome to our back chat listeners. Yes, you and I had the suits on on Saturday. Yep. And we um, oh, just wandering into a very nice part of Ascot, uh, the, the opening of the uh, yep. season there. And um, yeah. your uh, your partner, who's never been to the races, never before, been to the races, just decided before, yep. to just go straight to the top. Well, I got the uh, luckily enough after winning the sound of medal, Joe Davies, who's on the board at East Perth and also on uh, the board at Perth Racing, just texted me and said, "Hammer, I've got an invitation for you and a plus one if you'd like to come to the uh, the opening day at Ascot, come to the directors' lounge." And I'd been to the races a few times, and my partner Emily had never been, and. I replied, yep, we'll come along, no worries, RSVP. <laughs> we rolled in, it's 35 degrees, stinking hot, just walk straight upstairs, get the wristbands on, in the nice air con, Prosecco and beers on tap. How good's this? Oh, what do you, what do you mean? How do you place a bet? Oh, we're going to join the quaddy. We win that for 1400 bucks or whatever it was. So we just never been to the races before. Director's Lounge, air conditions, perfect views, free drinks, winning money. How good's this? Oh, gambling's easy. Is it brilliant? We'll go back next week. Yeah, no, it's uh, so... <laughs> Meanwhile, well, Skeet on the other table was having an absolute horror I'm of getting, a day. Oh, I'm losing Belted my short up heads. Post. I did get out of jail a little bit because mm. <laughs> I went to Leonora to have a bet. Oh, yeah. In fact, the short price favourite at $1.90. Oh. Well, there you go. And got a result, Hammer. But you know what? It's, I tell you what does uh, soften the blow. As you say, when you're uh, drinking the, the oh, alcohol, yeah, 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 yeah. shelters, of course, on tap. Uh, yep. When you're drinking that and it's uh, not costing you anything, it does that, take that, away yeah, the that pain. Place. And the food was fantastic oh. and the view was beautiful. The room was perfect. Oh, we would have been there for five or six hours and had a great time. It was very, very well put on. So thank you to Joe and uh, all the yes, Perth, Perth Racing. And if they ever want to invite yeah, us back. Yeah, they want to have us back. <laughs> yeah, back <laughs> would love to go. And we'll have be back. A, we'll uh, do a show from there, maybe. Shelter footy cast there. Shelter racing cast. He paints himself as a man of the people. I can tell you now, oh, yeah. if he had the chance to go up there and just uh, <laughs> sit in the director's lounge, just, just sit there and just uh, mind you, I was on a, on a table that was uh, that, that just just a little bit more elderly than, than you and I, yep. or certainly yep. than me, uh, then I went and joined the funky table and, uh, yeah, and, and yeah, we, Andrew Embley. Table, table four was having a good time. Yeah, Andrew Embley, who... Uh, well, he, he might have got home. I'm not sure what time he did. Yeah, <laughs> no. He does tend to turn it on when he wants to. Ember stormed home in the last, had a good win at the last, so got it. Uh, got up the table for us. Beautiful. Let's jump into our big moments of the round, and uh, it's all about the trade week, and we've got a couple of days, or well, two and a half days, obviously, before we uh, knuckle down. Tyler Brockman has been traded to the Eagles. Hawthorne received picks 44 and 63. Uh, Jay Gresham moved to Essendon as a restricted free agent. Uh, Tom Fulton traded to Melbourne from the Lions, who get pick 47, uh, essentially to help uh, if Maxi Gorn goes down with injury. And the interesting one which uh, emerged at the weekend, Jack Gunston requesting a yeah. trade back to Hawthorne after only one year in Brisbane. Bizarre. So I was um, I was at AFLW yesterday and was speaking to Mick about it, whose son Jackson is at, um, he's overseas, with, he plays at Brisbane, he's overseas with the boys at the moment. <laughs> And the news came out, and they were like, well, "What's going on?" And apparently, no one at Brisbane knew the Brisbane uh, the Brisbane management didn't know. No one at Hawthorne even knew. And he's just come out and said, "I'd, I'd just like to go back," which it's, is bizarre. Yeah. Well, someone said he was playing golf with a couple of his Hawthorne teammates, and it sort of flourished from there. But two, two aspects to this: a does Jack Gunson fit into what Hawthorne is doing in terms of mm. – I, I, look, I, I don't think – the more I read of it, the more I think less chances is of happening because it just simply goes away from what, what this – Mitch is trying to do. Mm. I mean, they um, they do this uh, Hawthorne annual golf trip over in America, so he would have had a, a couple of uh, shelters with the boys over there and got to talking about it. But, yeah, it, uh, you feel like the direction that they're going at the moment is they've got rid of a lot of their older players, they've traded where they can, and they've got – 
youth in, uh, youth into the team and it's just allowed to flourish and do what you want. And you can see the path he's working. Hawthorne are starting to play really good footy. John Newcomb's playing really well. Warple's allowed to do what he wants. Mitch uh, Lewis is coming and now going to become a star. And do you throw a veteran in there that doesn't maybe have many more years to go? Uh, look, you're probably leaning it towards him because of he is a Hawthorne champion. But whether or not he fits the bill, maybe to come in and show a bit of leadership and provide some experience to these young guys, maybe... But I feel like they would have thought about that when they got decided to trade him to Brisbane. So, I don't know. It'll be an interesting one to see whether it goes through. I mean, he's obviously friends with Mitch, so it might eventuate. But it's just a bizarre one to backflip in a year. Absolutely. Uh, WA clubs, before we touch on some of those other moves and, and contract signings, uh, the West Coast Eagles, uh, Tyler Brockman comes across. Uh, good young player, but I yep. mean, he's, he's a small forward, so it's never an easy, easy mm-hmm. gig. They've been relatively quiet, though. There was a bit of speculation Jack Darling's name was going to be thrown up. The Eagles have shut that down. So in terms of their senior players or trade value, and Jack's still got, I think, a bit of trade value just in terms of a team in the yep, premiership definitely. window. But they seem to be of, of mind. I think they're concentrating very much on the draft. Is that what's your feeling with West Coast approach? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. what they're going for. It's, I feel like... <clears throat> throughout the year it's been a lot of fan calls for trade all the older players get rid of this do this 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 they've had a few senior guys retire and now it's pretty clear that they are focusing on the draft a lot of talk around the number one pick they've been staunch that they're going to hold on to that uh, unless you know a big godfather deal comes their way which it very well might but for the moment they've drafted or they've traded in Matt Flynn and Tyler Brockman and then you know they're going to the Dev Robinson one fell through and but now it's for mine it's it's looking towards the draft and trying to get what you can from that um that's probably the, the feel that I've got on it. They're pretty keen on this number one pick and what they can event. If they get it, they get the best player in the draft, Harley Reid. And if they don't, they'll probably look to get three inside 20. So it's, you know, that's where I think their eyes are turned and they're headed. Uh, but it's, you know, it's it's been a lot of fan calls throughout the year for get rid of all these guys. And that's where I think the trade speculations has come from. But you're right. A few of these guys still do have trade currency. But it's, um yeah, I think the draft is where they're headed. Yeah, there's not too many, to be honest with you, that have that those older players. Jack's probably got someone we know, Oscar Allen, but he's just mm. one of the un- one of the yeah. few untouchables at the footy club. So, yeah, it's, it, Eagles, interesting. And, and as we move on, the, the theory seems to be that, the Eagles, unless something dramatic mm. happens, you said three inside the top twenty. That's probably what it, I mean. It's it's going to be Harley Reid at West Coast. Is that is that your feel? Yeah, that's my feel at the moment. I mean, if I'm North Melbourne, I'm not I'm not trading up for anything. What's the point? You've got two, three, fifteen, seventeen, and what nineteen or something. You've got a, just a mammoth Bevy. draft hand. You've just got the best draft hand in you know the last since Gold Coast and GWS mm. came in. You've got everything needed to just pick four or five guns for this year, which I'm sure there would be, and you put that alongside uh, Davies Uniac, Wardlaw, Sheasel, uh, Simkin, Nick Larkey, you've got enough talent there in the young core group of players that it's going to take this footy club, that footy club forward. Quickly. Very quickly. And I wouldn't, like, you, you see what Sheasel has been able to do in his first year in the comp. Alistair Clarkson's a sensational coach, will be able to develop these guys into a style of, a style of football that's going to help and be able to be played by the young players that they've got in. I think they'd be stupid to change and draft up and trade, trade three of them or two of them and an extra thing for for pick one. I mean, yes, Harley Reid is probably going to go one and will be a sensational footballer. But you know, you look back over if you get three hundred games, well, this is fantasizing. You get three hundred games in a Brownlow out of Harley Reid, or you get two hundred and fifty games in a Premiership out of draft pick two and three. For yeah. North Melbourne, you're probably going to take the two of them. So it's, you know, I wouldn't be touching it if I were North. You've got an amazing turn of fate that's given you this draft hand and, and you've got to use it. Absolutely. And off the back of that, if if North Melbourne can't translate that into playing finals, tell me how many seasons, obviously you can't come in as a draft in and be, be an automatic superstar. Well, there are very few do. Who would you, how many years do you think for there to play finals is required for this to be deemed the talent they've got translated into finals. Is, is it a, two years from now, clarko has got to have them play in finals? Is it less? Is it more? I think it's probably... Like, I think two years from now, if they can be really challenging for it, I don't think you... You can make an excuse for not making the finals in two years, but if you're sixteenth to eighteenth in two years, then you've that's a that's a real flop. But I feel like if you can get in four or five talented young eighteen year olds now, in two years they'll be twenty, the other kids will be twenty one to twenty three. You're going to have that 
about that really good age dem- uh, demographic to have a throw at the stumps at a seventh or eighth and be a challenging, dynamic, exciting team that, you know, you, you've got your experience and you're probably not going to win a grand final because you, you need that older demographic to really be steady and play. But you'll have that team that can upset anyone on any given day and do anything, uh, you know, no matter the weekend. So I think that's probably in two years' time, if they're in that position, if they're challenging, they'll be okay. And then in three years' time, I think they'll probably be in a position where you'd be saying, look, you guys are going to now make it. Uh, speaking of making it, Lockie Schultz to Collingwood will probably happen. So to Liam Henry to St Kilda. Is the Lockie Schultz one, I think it's pick 19 or thereabouts, does that get it done in your mind? Or is it is that a bit unders for, for Frio? Oh, I mean, it's probably... It, it might be unders for what he is playing, but it's probably not unders for how Freo have valued him over the last few years. Yeah. He's, been, he's been rookie, 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 finally got a year, and he's maybe triggered one extra because of playing good footy. But at no point, so if, if, if you had said to Freo two years ago that Lockie Schultz would be traded for a first rounder, they would have laughed at you. But mm. for the, the way that he has been able to play almost under the radar of his own football team to, to be able to go out and do what he's done, I think he's definitely worth that. But he's, um, yeah, probably. That's that's probably not what Freo would have pegged him for. So I think they'll be. I think they'll take it. It's. Um, I think you know the, the deal. If deals like that often get done, yep. and um, I think they'll find a way to do it. But uh, yeah, I think that's probably a little bit unders for what he is playing and the the the, seat, the the career that he's probably got lined up in front of him. But um, for what Fremantle have been uh, valuing him as over the last few years, that's probably about right. Some other uh, movements. Uh, Premiership Bulldog Toby McLean delisted after 102 games. Had two ACLs, by the way, yep. 27 years of age. Uh, Tom Hawkins signs a one-year extension, which is good. Mm. Oh, great for the footy club. He <laughs> yeah. shouldn't have ever got to the stage where he's going to contemplate leaving, which he yeah. may not have, but that's yep. a decent result. Now, I need you to help me with this one. North Melbourne has signed former Swan Toby Pink as a delisted free agent. Um, I've never heard of him. <laughs> Toby Pink. I haven't heard of him either. <laughs> a- Unless he's changed his name and it was someone else, I've never heard of him. How he's long has he been delisted for? A Dow defender named fullback in the SANFL team of the year. I have no idea. But uh, Toby's got the chance. Uh, so Toby, he's Melbourne. been out of the game for a, a couple of years. Well, playing in the SANFL, in the NFL, which is under the radar so. from, from our perspective anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. I've um, No, I haven't I hadn't heard of him and I'm sure that, you know, they wouldn't have done that for no reason. So it's, uh, you know. Good on you, Toby. Yeah, Toby Pink off to North Melbourne uh, as a delisted free agent. This is the Shelter Footy Car Skeet and the Sandover Medalist. We'll just run through some of those key trade dates. The free agency window has closed. Trade period ends Wednesday at 4.30 our time. Mm -hmm. Uh, The National Draft, of course, on the 20th and 21st of November and the Rookie Draft on the 22nd of November. Let's run through some of the remaining trades. There are up uh, about 20 players hoping to get from one club to another. Shane McAdam, Adelaide to Melbourne. Yep. Elliot Hilmerberg from Adelaide to GWS. Jack Gunston we've spoken about. Paddy Dow, interesting Carlton was in Kilda. He was a high draft pick. He went pick three. He went the pick after Andrew and he's just been out of favour. He's... Yeah, he come in, he's come in and played a couple of pretty good games this year for Carlton, and he just he can't find a way into their midfield, which is, you know, fair enough. Um, but I think he's certainly one that deserves another chance and could go. Uh, I think he'll go to St Kilda in the end. So it's um, and that would be good for him. He's a very good fellow. He's a very good player. So it deserves another crack. Massimo D'Ambrosio from the Bombers to Hawthorne. I think he was a, a mid-season draftee that from memory anyway. But yeah, so he's looking to get across to the Hawks and Brandon Zerk Thatcher. From the Bombers to Port, so Port being pretty active, so to the Bombers. Yep. Lockie Schultz, we've spoken about, Liam Henry. Asava Radagalia from yes. Geelong to Port Adelaide. Now, he's this is really intriguing because Port Adelaide, defensively, they're uh, that's where they were showing up badly yep. in September. How important is it? And Geelong's getting a bit of a reputation during this period, trade period, of being uh, hard asses when it comes to yep. this sort certainly of... certainly is, and I think that's uh, that'll play in their favour if... Port Adelaide, who desperately need... I mean, Alir Alir is a star, and they probably need someone else to help him out down there. Um, and if, if Radigali is the guy that they, they, they really want, and Geelong are going to play hardball, they're probably going to have to pay overs for him, which is uh, the way that they've been active. They're probably going to have picks. They're going to have something. They'll, they'll be able to offer something, but it's... Um, yeah, they desperately need another key pillar down there, and if that's Radigali, that's Radigali, and if they like him, they're, uh, they're probably going to have to pay overs because Geelong will be happy to... St- Stick the uh, the feet in and play hardball. Absolutely, and uh, Scully really happy that someone like Radagalia getting seven hundred thousand <laughs> or thereabouts <laughs> to go and play as a defender. Maybe Chol Gold Coast or Hawthorne. So. I reckon Dimmer doesn't rate him or something around those lines because yep. he left Richmond left anyway. Richmond, Marby's yep. going to go to Hawthorne possibly. Elijah Hollands, 
Gold Coast to Carlton, Jacob Kaczynski from Hawthorne to Richmond. These are all pending, of course. Harrison Petty, Melbourne to Adelaide. So he's an interesting player because yep. he's a, he played a bit forward, but he's essentially a defender. Yep, went forward, went back, played a lot of played pretty good football down back. Um, Melbourne's back line is just tough to get a to get a locked away yep. spot. So go and find another opportunity. Absolutely, that's where uh, I guess they they used him as a forward. Uh, Xavier Dersma, Port Adelaide to Essen. I think he could be a, a pick up for the Bombers. Yep, a reasonably good player. I think he's one that's. Uh, I mean, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to Port Adelaide because they just went very well, and then you sort of forget about them, and then all of a sudden they're in the finals. But um, no, a very good player that can do lots of lots of good things. I think. Arazio Fantasia, Port Adelaide to the Giants. The only thing I can say about Arazio is. He just can't get his body right. No, nah, he's been oh, he's been like the best name in the comp by a mile, and um, has been played good football in patches, but you just haven't seen enough of him. So if GWS can get him and get him right, he's a good player. But we'll see. Absolutely, and uh, we know there's question marks over Ivan Soldo at Richmond, Jack Billing, St Kilda, Nick Caulfield, potentially St Kilda to the Bulldogs, and Jordan Sweet Bulldogs to Port Adelaide. So um, of those, there's still some some work to be done off the back of that. Uh, before we jump into one of the greatest cricket victories uh, we've seen, I love seeing England get beaten. But before we do that. Yesterday at uh, Mineral Resources Park, <coughs> Layerfield W Action uh, went and called the West Coast yep. Eels. First time I've seen them. Look at you starting to tense yeah, up. Yeah, it was a tough one. <laughs> tense up. Not our best game. 70 points, hot weather, good side Melbourne, West yep. Coast not good. No, West Coast not very good. We, um, I thought we started okay. Mm. The first first five or ten minutes that we brought the pressure and we were tackling and Adelaide laid out the blueprint of how to beat them the week before. They had 83 tackles and pressured the ball the whole way along and in the first half, we had 40 tackles and we were 15 points down. So we were, you know, we'd, we'd stuck to a game plan, which was put a lot of pressure on the football, put a lot of pressure on the ball carrier um, and make it hard for them. And we were able to transition the football okay and get it inside 50 and, and have, you know, we scored two goals from our limited supply um, and our defenders were pretty strong because we had enough pressure on the ball. And then in the third quarter, the um, pressure dropped right off and the floodgates opened up and they're a very good side. And if you, if you, you know, if you can't stick the pressure for four quarters against a team like that, they'll just open you up. And it went for, you know, when there was a 10, 15 minute patch there where it was just bang, bang, repeats, repeats, goal, goal, goal. So ended up getting a stun and, um, you know, they're the premiership favorites for a reason. Alyssa Bannon, uh, she <laughs> kicked five by my account. <laughs> Could have kicked the game. seven or eight. Could have yep. kicked seven, gave at least one away. <laughs> Had cramp, I think, at the end when she was going to shoot for six. Yep. She absolutely toweled up uh, the Eagles. And, as I've seen, only done two matches, but North Melbourne and also Melbourne against our WA sides, the height of some of their forwards and their ability to, yeah, the, it just doesn't seem that either Fremantle or West Coast have got the weapons that two really good sides do. So they're they're two of so the two of those teams and Adelaide are the best three in the competition, in my opinion. Uh, North Melbourne have got. Four, three or four 185 centimetre plus tall forwards that are getting it done. Melbourne are a bit. Melbourne are the same. They had a few. In, they had a few outs on the weekend, which probably helped us in the end. But they, um, Alyssa Bannon is one that is 177 centimetres, so not massive, but you know, an awkward height and, agile, gee. and would be almost the fastest player in the competition. So she's a hard one because if you play a tall on her, she beats you for speed. You play a small on her, she beats you in the air, which was just you know the combination of all of those on the week uh, yesterday for us and she was able to get really good looks off the back of being a talented player she got two goals out the back by you know coming up and hitting back and sprinting past everyone and then she got a couple where she took some really good marks so she's a good player Melbourne are a very good side and with uh, I think they had 52 insides 50 so their tall forwards or their forwards are always going to have a good look when that's yep. the case no question uh, the running premise now we've got to ask you about your coach who's <coughs> coming out afterwards and uh, spoken about the fixturing which yep. we know there's what 10 rounds 10 rounds yep um, well, how many teams? Eight, eight, we've got 18, 18 teams. teams, 10 rounds, and the weighting of who plays who, he questioned with regards to Melbourne, the running premiers up against your team, the Eagles, who have been modest, to say the least, in recent times. So um, wh what is the, the thought process around the fixturing and, and how it's weighted? Well, I, I think the thought process there is that Melbourne have been an, in an inception team and have been very, very good for a long period of time. We're an expansion side who has come in and really struggled. Um, and we haven't got the compensation of some of the other expansion sides who came in last year, for example. Um, and <clears throat> we're still sort of, we're still trying to find a way to get better. And we, the given that it's only 10 rounds, you can get, like we don't play Brisbane this year, which is fair. We don't play North Melbourne, which I think is fair. We, we have to play some good teams. Mm. I understand that, but it's 10 rounds. But to miss out, for example, for us on playing Hawthorne, who are an expansion side from last year, and instead have to play Melbourne, who are the reigning premiers, and 
uh, at the, you know, the, this point of the AFLW competition, there are certainly, we're certainly outclassed and it's, it's, it was clear to see yesterday we're, we're not at that level and we're developing to be there, but we, we're not there yet. And for that to be, you know, a, a permanent fixture for us almost, we played them last year in the last round, lost by 75 points or 76 points and 70 again this year. So it's, it's, um, <clears throat> that's where the frustration is. I think for me, I'm ha- it's, I'm not too uh, unhappy playing these teams. I think it's a good thing for our Learning. players to mm. learn and, and, and understand how the, you know, the best sides in the comp do it. And it's, you know, I, for my, for mine is still playing. You want to play the best teams. You want to, you know, see how you compare and how you stack up. And if it's a, you know, if it's a 70 point belting, you go back and you say, okay, what, what did they do? And what can we do to sort of, how can we take things out of that game? I understand for Mick that it's frustrating and disappointing that we're not, you know, we, we're having to play the best team in the comp, but um, yes, the fixturing could be a little bit different, but at the same time, it's it is what it is, and you have to make the most of it. And I think for us now, it's you know the game's done, and we've got to take as much as we can away from it. The first half was okay. What did we do in the second half that that cost us, and how did they go about what they did? So that's where we'll get the learnings from. But I can see his frustration. Absolutely, it was a tough day at the office for the Eagles. Seventy point loss. So too for Frio getting beaten by well, you up should I say getting beaten by mm-hmm. Geelong by uh, four goals at the Cattery. This is the Shelter Footy Cast. Ski down the sand over medalist. All right, let's jump into some other sport, uh, most notably at the World Cup. Uh, well, let's talk cricket because England, <laughs> yes. let's, we, if Australia is crap, which we are at the moment, we've got to beat Sri Lanka tonight to give ourselves any chance to at least stay alive. Uh, I was keeping an eye on this match on my phone last yep. night and uh, Afghanistan started oh. like a bomb with none for 100. They were dismissed, I think, for 284 or thereabouts. Oh, what I'm looking at it here, 284. And, wow. uh, and then England <laughs> get rolled. Rashid Khan does the number on them. So they're one from three. Yep. Rashid English. Khan, three for 37. Oh, my God. Look at this. It's. It, I mean, I hate England winning anything. Agreed. Everyone does. Agreed. And to see the Afghans rolling by 69 <laughs> runs, 215 all out after 40 overs, geez, it's good. Because we're crap. We know yeah, that. We're yeah, not, yeah, not going to win the World Cup. No. But unless we find something. But obviously. if we're not there... I want us to take England with us. Yep. If England win it, yeah, you just don't want – it's like you don't want to see them succeed if we're not, and it's uh, – yeah, geez, it was good. It was good. Uh, as I said, England uh, won from three. Now, we're zero from two. We, we have played a couple of good sides, to be honest. India are obviously going to be tough to beat. South Africa's in good form. They've done a number of us recently. But we're going into this match. Mitch Marsh and others have said, no change. We're just going to stick yep. to the formula. And they can't really make too many changes. Sean, Zab- Sean Abbott's the only guy, I think, in the 15-man squad that hasn't had a game yet. Josh Inglis has replaced uh, Alex Carey behind the stumps. I don't know whether we've got the right team, Hammer, for, for the World Cup in India. No. The spin-wise, Samp has been average. Yeah. Just looking at it at the moment, for mine, it's our inability to make runs. And if Mitch Marsh isn't making 100, which is... <laughs> You know that's a hard thing to do in a World Cup in India, and if he's not doing that, we're not we're not scoring enough. And I, I don't think we're getting enough out of our top order, and it's it's just it's really hurting our ability to put pressure on. And and you know our bowlers are trying, but it's you know we it's it's trying conditions over there, and it just makes it tough. I don't think we do have the team in, and I mean Sri Lanka, it'll be a hard one. But for mine, it's you know unless Marsh is going out and making a hundred, we're not putting enough pressure on the scoreboard and our bowlers aren't able to do enough mm. with the with the ball. And Smith and Labuschagne, terrific test cricketers. Yes. But probably not the acceleration early that, that they need. Um, Dave Warner, everyone keeps saying he's been a World Cup star. Well, guess what? He He's scoring at a pedestrian rate, so yep. too Mitch Marsh. Everything that could go wrong for us at the moment is um, Travis Head, don't think he'll get back. If he does, it'll be too late because yep. we'll have uh, missed out on the semis. Anyway, this is not a tournament we're going to win. I think we've seen India knock over Pakistan pretty comfortably. Yep. They're deservedly the favourites. But if they don't get there, we'll be barracking for New Zealand, won't we? Absolutely, I think. it'll be Or, or Afghanistan, if, if Afghanistan <laughs> can find a way. We're, uh, I'll jump on. We'll jump on. I'll jump on. But um, look... It, I think India will go in as the favourites. But they still, I think they. I don't know what they're paying. They'll oh, be. They'd, they'd be outright favourites. New Zealand probably. And you know, I've got to say, South Africa are playing, South some, Africa pretty are playing some pretty good cricket. Mm. But it's um, yeah. I mean, I think it's India's tournament to lose over there as well. They play the conditions. They're very yep. good side. But um, yeah, it's going to be hard for us to to real. It's going to take a miracle for us to get there. And if we can't, I hope Afghanistan can. Yeah, and New Zealand, <laughs> I'll bear it for them because yeah. they, they were stitched up in nineteen and yep, close long, enough to home. As long as the Poms get rolled, because yep. they're in the semi finals <clears> now at the World Cup of Rugby, having beaten Fiji, but um, mm. not that. Rugby you know, front South Africa would be maybe hoping that they cricket team could get up after they get. Uh, yes, they got no Ireland. Ireland got Ireland got rolled by, by all blacks. S- yeah.
yes, by the All Blacks. So that result. Be in a massive so they result. Could, get the, could get the double, the, uh, Jeez, the New good. Zealanders. That'd be huge. All Blacks uh, and the Black Caps. Absolutely. Um, look, we love beating our little brothers, but um, by the same time, if we can't do it, they may yeah, as well win it. And I hope it's not the Palms. Absolutely. Um, from cricket to boxing. Now, I didn't see this. I ignored you, by the way. Nor, did, nor did I. <laughs> we were both at the 40. Tim Zhu has defended his WBA super welterweight title, beating Brian Mendoza by unanimous decision on the Gold Coast yesterday. Apparently, he belted the living suitcase out of him. And didn't knock him out? Just got the... I don't think so, no. I don't think there was any such... But he's setting himself up, of course. They, they keep finding their way towards uh, the next target. But Tim Z, he's a quality act, though. He is. I uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of him. Scoey has uh, obviously been over and, and seen him, and I've watched it number enough of him to know that he's, you know... He beaten the living daylights out of people, and he's doing it very, very comfortably. But uh, no, I haven't seen this fight, and probably won't watch the replay now, knowing that he wins. <laughs> but uh, you know, well done, Tim. <laughs> exactly. Uh, this is the Shelter Footy Cast. Uh, sort of a question without notice here: the Thirsty Camel Clanger of the Week. Don't run out of your favourites. Grab your shelters at Thirsty Camel. You got. Well, I'll just go to your game yesterday. I reckon uh, there's about 400 in the, in the second half. Yeah, there was a, there was a handful of clangers. Oh, what was the thirsty camel? I think Amelia's Jules probably. I was the about to say the that. Week, yeah, it? we love her. She's we do. In, yeah. She's getting some blood tests today, by the way. Did she? Well, she she's getting some because obviously she was finished ninth in the two rack and wasn't herself. So the Cox plates off the agenda. It's just a question now whether she's going to be okay to run in the Golden Eagle. But yeah, it was a bit of a clanger from a, a you know excitement point of view that she could continue her, her sort of great form, but. Not to be. No, not to be. Got into the straight and uh, just got chewed up and, and didn't really look, didn't look herself, didn't fire a shot. And uh, and everyone in the director's lounge took a deep sigh and was a bit disappointed, I think. We moved on, didn't we? There's a uh, few clangers in there. In fact, I'll take a clanger for my punting on Saturday. Yeah. Very poor at Ascot, uh, very poor at uh, Caulfield, very poor at Randwick. And Leonora got me out of jail, <laughs> uh, as you blokes win the quaddy in the best possible way. Yeah. Uh, other results, by the way, just uh, looking around the competition, the Sheffield Shields on, WA playing Tasmania. Uh, the Women's A League started on the weekend and Perth Glory had a win there. The Wildcats went down twice. Sydney Kings yep. got them yesterday and they were beaten by Melbourne United uh, on Friday night. So uh, Cats, I just don't reckon they're the same side. That No, Cats th- need to find something. It's, yes. not, it's been a shaky start. Next time you go to a sporting event with your beautiful partner, Emily, you, you'll take her to the basketball and somehow you'll end up yep, in a corporate somehow suite. Somehow we'll end up in a corporate squ- suite and we'll put, you know, we'll put 10 bucks on Bryce Cotton to have 40 and it'll, it'll, win us, it'll win us a thousand. So it'll be good fun. Absolutely. But the Wildcats back in... Uh, in fact, they're playing in Adelaide this Saturday against the 36ers, so I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, time for some listener questions to uh, wrap us up with Scoey just trying to find his way back from the school. I don't think he would have done too many drop-offs in his, in his life. No, I don't think... I think he took probably took the wrong turn and his, uh, <laughs> the kids will miss first period if that's what, they, uh, if that's what they're up for. I've never seen a bloke look more flat just walking <laughs> along aimlessly without his... Alex, he just, mm. he just looks like he's out of his... Uh, out of his depth, I think. Out of his going. comfort zone, exactly. Uh, here we go. This is from Swoozy. Swoozy. Is that right? Swoozy. Do we know this bloke? That'll be Swoozy. Hey, boys. What are your thoughts on Jaden Hunt's debut season... With the Eagles, Hammer. I thought he was pretty good. Yeah. I thought he was reasonably good. He um, obviously filled a hole that we had with uh, pace and explosion and, and acceleration and all the rest of it. And I think he was able to do that plenty of times. He was uh, he had some real dash off half back and and gave us a lot of drive going forward. I think he came something like I can't remember where he finished in the BNF. Maybe it's definitely top, top ten. Definitely. definitely finished top ten in the BNF. Which um, you know I understand the Eagles had a poor season, but. Um, to move clubs and, uh, and finish in the top 10 is a pretty good effort. Okay, Jack Miles says, This guy, lads, can confirm Scoey had a good time at the Charles Hotel on Friday night. Very disappointed, didn't see any of Skeeter. Do better, mate. Ha ha. Well, I was actually hosting the 33rd National Police Footy Championships at the Novotel Hotel. All the states came together. Yep, By the way, yep, shout yep, out yep. to the, the Quokkas and the Hogs. That's the Quokkas, the, the ladies' team, and the, the Hogs, the boys. Both WA sides won the, their uh, championship. Uh, well done. Uh, so well done to them and the cops. They were absolutely they're on the gas big nice. time. They do know how to have a drink. So well done to all those who got along to that. So I didn't get the the Charles, but I believe as uh, yep. Man and Scoey, uh, we put in good was, representation. Well, the shoulder footy car. It was almost like the Sandover Medal. Two <coughs> votes. W Schofield West Coast. Three votes. H Brayshaw. Yeah, East we Perth. Uh, we had a very good time there. <laughs> very good time. Long John twenty one. Good day, lads. Love the potty. Long time. Uh, Fan and just curious, what do you think the problem here is? Uh, why do players keep wanting to leave or just getting traded? As you can see, I'm just reading this uh, for the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> why do players keep wanting to leave or just get traded? Well, I suppose that's the beauty of, of modern day footy is that players have got more, yep, uh, let's say more power in in where they end up playing footy. Yeah, it's uh, oh, well, look, I think the way that 
trades often work is you want to leave for either more money or opportunity. And in the, the modern game, I think there is money up for grabs. The, the CBA is expanding that player, you know, teams need gaps filled. And, uh, you know, if there's money in the salary cap and you can go and find, a, you know, an extra hundred or whatever it is uh, that you wouldn't normally get. It's um, <clears throat> footy's a very well-paying job and it's uh, it's tough to find that money elsewhere. So while you're in it, get it while the getting's good. And it's either that or, or more opportunity. So I think those are the two reasons. And you look at a lot of the guys... I look at a lot of the names that are getting traded this year, and I've sort of been taken aback. Like, how are you? To be, mm. What are you? Say, who are you to say I need? To, I want to go and move, and I want to move. But that's probably because the opportunity that they've got at their own club isn't as isn't as good as it's uh, as it could be elsewhere, and and they're happy to find another opportunity somewhere else. So that's probably why a lot of the trades are happening. And at the moment, it's um you know there's a lot of movement, but it's I think in the in the interest of the players, and it's you know it's a good thing for the comp. And to be fair, when it comes to the draft, you don't have that choice yep. where you end up anywhere in the country. Mm. So. As time goes on and as you have a bit more longevity, you get the opportunity to have more of a say in your future. You know, I talked about just reading a question without looking first. I'm going to throw one out there here. We need to find a shelter XPA X factor, a performer or performance of the weekend that we can just maybe uh, give uh, a carton of shelter to. Is that right, uh, Jaden? Uh, from a look at you, you've got the blank look in your eyes. Okay, who would I give the... Uh... Is there anybody that we can... Has WA done anything of any significance on the weekend to give us that uh, little sparkle in our eyes to say, well done, you get the Shelter XBA? Uh, footy, Eagles, Dockers, both beaten. Nope. No they, cigar. No cigar. WA Cricket's uh, still playing a Shield match. Uh, nothing in India that's... Uh, who's that? Pan Cam Bank. I tell you what, I don't know if he drinks, but Min Woo Lee. Oh yeah, Min Woo Lee. Yeah, there we the go. Asians. Got it. Yeah, there it is. Bang. The cow open. I've just wow. looked at it. Yeah, he and from pillar to post, he just went whack, whack, whack. Sixty two on the first day or something. Sixty four on the next day. Just was going from bang, bang, thirty bang. under. Yep, led the whole way. He's yet yeah, there. You go. There's your X factor. XPA we go. X factor. We, we workshop that beautifully. So Min Woo Lee, not sure if he <coughs> loves the shelters. Oh, he would. He's, next time he's in town, I'll deliver him a carton. Perfect. He's a gun, and so are you, Hammer. Um, that is our shelter footy cast for this Monday. Of course, we're going to be back every Monday, not Thursdays. Email us at footycast at shelterbrewing Shelter footy cast on Instagram. We're on socials. You name it. Search the back chat or shelter footy cast playlist. Skeet and the Santa medalist. Well done, young man. Thank you very much. Well done.